The devastating earthquake that struck Nepal on April the 25th, 2015, killed over 9,000 people. Over 600,000 homes were destroyed, leaving families homeless and vulnerable. Of course, it was a third world country, so the effects of destruction were not greatly noticed. But what if something like this happens in a first world country, like the US? A recent discovery in the San Andreas Fault area has revealed that a section of the fault has undergone something called a seismic creep, which is when the plates move gradually, releasing stress without causing large quakes. But as researchers looked back millions of years, they found evidence that this section of the fault may have experienced earthquakes of a magnitude of 7 or greater. That's stronger than the infamous Loma Prieta earthquake that shook the Bay Area in 1989. Although it's unclear when these massive quakes occurred, scientists believe they took place within the last three million years, and that the San Andreas Fault might be due for a major earthquake soon. When geoscientists drilled into the Earth's surface nearly two miles below as part of SAFOD, San Andreas Fault Observatory at Depth project, they discovered something incredible. A zone of the fault that has experienced not just one or two, but potentially more than 100 earthquakes. The evidence was clear. Highly deformed siltstones and mudstones, combined with heating biomarkers, suggested that this fault area is a hotspot for seismic activity. Moreover, it was a stark reminder of the potential dangers the San Andreas Fault possessed, proving that it is slowly brewing something far worse than an earthquake. The San Andreas Fault is not the only fault in California, but it is the 800-pound gorilla of faults here. A well-known geological feature in California, it stretches about 800 miles from the Gulf of California to Cape Mendocino. This fault serves as the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North. Being one of the longest and most significant faults in the world, it runs through some of the most populated regions of California, like Los Angeles and San Francisco. The recent revelations by the director of the Southern Californian Earthquake Center, Thomas H. Jordan, have caused significant concerns for Californians as he announced the San Andreas Fault appears to be in a critical state, indicating that a powerful earthquake could be on the horizon. While news of a looming earthquake may not surprise Californian residents who have long feared the fault's potential for catastrophic events, the new warning was particularly alarming. Jordan warned that the fault's Southern Californian section could give way at any moment, saying certain areas appear to be locked, loaded, and ready to go. Jordan announced this at the National Earthquake Conference in Long Beach, where attendees learned that the last major earthquake to strike the South San Andreas region was in 1857. The magnitude 7.9 earthquake ruptured a staggering 185 miles of the fault between Monterey County and the San Gabriel Mountains near Los Angeles. Scientists and geologists have studied the movement of tectonic plates and found something interesting. They noticed that the Pacific Plate is moving towards the northwest in relation to the North American Plate. This movement means that earthquakes should relieve around 16 feet of accumulated plate movement every 100 years. However, there is a different situation when it comes to the San Andreas Fault. The stress has been building up over a century and has not been released yet. That's why experts suggest that the Californian government should focus on preparing for a potentially powerful earthquake as strong as magnitude 9. Jordan also said the fault has been quiet, too quiet, and the springs on the San Andreas system have been wound very tight, especially in the southern San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault has a notorious history, with the 1857 Fort Tejon quake being the most infamous. With an estimated magnitude of 7.9, it was so devastating that it left an indelible mark on history. And as the San Andreas Fault slowly grinds its way towards the next catastrophe, the ominous question lingers. Will it be the final reckoning for those who call California their home? To answer this, a team led by Thomas Jordan recently simulated a possible magnitude 7.8 quake on the San Andreas Fault. The results were nothing short of terrifying. The simulation begins at the Salton Sea and quickly spreads west towards the San Gabriel Mountains, with seismic waves violently shaking the Los Angeles area. Another video shows ground shaking so intense it stretches from northern San Diego County all the way to Barstow. And this isn't the first time such a simulation has been conducted. In 2010, the Southern Californian Earthquake Center used a supercomputer to predict what a magnitude 8 earthquake would look like. 
The simulation, modeled after the 1857 earthquake, but even more substantial, starts in Monterey County and heads towards the Mexican border. In both simulations, the LA Basin and San Fernando Valley would bear the brunt of the destruction. Soft soils in the valley would trap the shaking, causing it to reverberate with incredible force. As a result, the vibration would be felt across a vast area, with the reach of the devastation expanding to unfathomable proportions. According to Thomas Jordan, the San Andreas Fault has a big directivity pulse that pushes energy down the fault, creating seismic waves that excite sedimentary basins like the San Fernando Valley and the Los Angeles Basin. This energy transfer leads to significant shaking in the region, persisting for long periods. So, what type of fault is the San Andreas Fault? Assuming the simulation occurs, it would be classified as a strike-slip fault. This means that the two fault sides move horizontally past each other rather than vertically. It's this movement that creates the directivity pulse and allows energy to be transmitted down the fault. Many people believe the tectonic plates move at an incredible speed, but the reality is quite different. These plates move past each other at a sluggish pace of just a few inches per year, equivalent to the rate at which your fingernails grow. Despite this slow rate, plate movement is far from steady. In some years, the plates can be locked in place, pushing against one another with no motion. However, strain gradually builds up over time until the rock breaks along the fault and the plates suddenly slip a few feet. This sends out waves in all directions. While the San Andreas Fault runs underground, it is visible in some places, such as the Carrizo Plain in San Luis Obispo County in Marin County. However, the fault is not always easy to spot. It can be covered by brush and alluvium, especially in areas like San Bernardino and Los Angeles. Massive parts of the roads along the fault are cut through the great mountains of the gouge, powdery and crumbled rock that the moving plates have crushed. Jordan also shared a dreadful report from the U.S. Geological Survey that has sounded the alarm on the southern San Andreas Fault. According to the report, a catastrophic magnitude 7.8 earthquake could wreak havoc, causing 50,000 injuries, $200 billion in damages, and long-lasting disruptions. But that's not all. The report predicts an estimated 1,500 deaths and a crippled sewer system for six months long. The sheer power of the earthquake is astounding, with shaking lasting almost two minutes. The Coachella Valley, Inland Empire and Antelope Valley would bear the brunt of it, but even areas like the San Gabriel Valley and East Los Angeles, where sediments trap shaking waves, could suffer pockets of vigorous shaking. Dr. Lucy Jones, an earthquake expert, said that if Los Angeles were hit by a tremor like the one that hit southern Turkey in northern Syria, only 1% of buildings would collapse. However, many more buildings would become unlivable, and around 40% would be severely damaged and unusable. This means that even new condos in downtown LA could be affected. One study estimates that great earthquakes with magnitude 8 and higher happen to have an energy of 15 trillion kilograms of TNT. But they only happen once a year, and in 2004, one earthquake in Haiti was of magnitude 7. Earthquakes this size occur about 20 times each year worldwide. The Haiti earthquake released energy equivalent to 476 million kilograms of explosives, about 100 times the amount of energy released by the atomic bomb which destroyed the city of Hiroshima during World War II. Earthquakes are deadly, but there is something far more sinister than a high-magnitude seismic event. One of the reasons why the San Andreas Fault should be feared is not how much energy it has, but what it can bring afterwards. The study, led by University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign Civil, and environmental engineer Professor Ahmed Albana and Professor Aries Rosakis of the California Institute of Technology, sheds light on the dangers of coastal areas surrounding the fault. The connection between strike-slip faulting and tsunamis has been a topic of exploration. Still, often studies focus on specific fault systems or geographic locations, overlooking the intricate details of fault geometry and bathymetry. However, a groundbreaking study has just been released that examines the fundamentals of a strike-slip fault system within the boundaries of a narrow bay, providing critical insight into the hazard associated with such faulting. The study's lead author, Albana, says that instead of concentrating on location-specific events, they simulated a basic planner fault, passing through a simplified smooth-bottom bay similar to a bathtub. 
This simplified model enables them to generalize to any place on the planet that may be at risk. The simulations revealed that intersonic earthquakes, which are fault ruptures that happen so quickly that their movement outpaces the shaking waves they generate, can trigger massive tsunami waves. El Banner illustrates the effect of horizontal strike-slip fault displacements by comparing it to shaking a water cup in your hand. He explains that the sloshing motion results from the horizontal shaking, which pushes and pulls the boundaries of the bay leading to water displacement in the vertical direction and initiating the tsunami. The revelations of the study state that it could cause significant damage to coastal areas, including flooding and destruction of buildings, and the amount of damage caused by a tsunami depends on several factors, including the size and speed of the wave, the slope of the coastline, and the height of the sea level. In addition, these waves can travel across entire oceans, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. As you might know, the Chilean tsunami of 1960 is a prime example of the devastation that these events can cause. This tsunami was generated by a massive 9.5 magnitude earthquake that ruptured over a distance of more than 1,000 kilometers, causing destruction in Chile and as far away as Hawaii and Japan. Seismologists strongly advise that we prioritize the construction of earthquake-resistant buildings and infrastructure. This can be achieved by incorporating flexible structures and shock-absorbing materials in the design process. Doing so can significantly enhance the likelihood of survival during seismic events. Moreover, it's crucial to establish reliable early warning systems that can provide ample time for coastal residents to evacuate in the event of a tsunami. These systems can be equipped with advanced sensors that detect even slight changes in sea level or seismic activity. The timely dissemination of alerts through text messages or other communications channels can mean the difference between life and death. Thus, implementing these measures should be a top priority for all communities in disaster-prone areas. As the San Andreas Fault shifts and strains beneath the surface, it's hard not to wonder when the next devastating earthquake will strike and what kind of destruction it will leave in its wake.